good afternoon um, to everyone and appreciate you taking some time this afternoon to learn more uh, about our Starship Cloud solution. As all of you are aware, our ship gear platform is gonna be sunsetting here uh, at the end of the year. Um, so we're excited to talk more about our Starship Cloud uh, solution and what that can all offer to you uh, here coming up here hopefully in the next few months. So I'm gonna jump right into a very short presentation and I'll go through a really quick demo high level. Um, and then if you are all interested, please uh, let us know. We'll have a poll here at the end. Um, and then Jason um, or Will, who's also joining us, will be following up with all of you uh, after today's call and see if we can get more in-depth conversations going around Starship as well. All right, so um, just a little bit um, background. Um, you know, obviously all of you know who we are, um, uh, but a lot of you don't know how long, you know, really Starship has been around, right? So um, we, we kind of formed together back in 1987 as a company. Um, Starship itself has been around since 1989, right? So it's really our flagship product, as many may think ship gear is our flagship product, uh, but Starship is really our flagship solution that we offer to many different ERPs. However, QuickBooks, we've been around now for 20 plus years with Intuit as a partnership uh, and going very strong. Um, we're even a QuickBooks solutions provider as well, um, which simply means that we have QuickBooks licensing access that we can provide uh, to potential users. So. Again, a lot of uh, benefits here of working with us. Um, and just this past year, we were nominated or actually rewarded, I should say, um, as a 2022 premier partner by UPS uh, as part of the UPS Ready program. Um, so we are one of uh, five solutions uh, that were given this award uh, in the country. Um, so we're very honored uh, to be awarded that uh, by a partner like UPS. So. Um, we do participate, I should mention, all of you in the Digital Connection, formerly known as CTP program, um, with Starship. So many of you may have those funds act accessible to you. Um, and we can talk more about that as we talk individually of what discounts may be provided to you um, as part of that program. So I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, the multi-carrier strategy um, that, you know, we're talking about here with Starship. Um, ship gear being our middleware program, just really making that connection between UPS and FedEx as a bridge. Um, Starship really takes it um, a lot further. Um, it's really going to help you not only with your parcel shipping, uh, it's also going to help you with your LTL shipping. And we talk about that multi-carrier strategy and what that can offer to you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, leveraging line item details. So as you produce maybe your international documentation, you might be doing that outside of world ship. Um, or ship manager today, you can do all of that inside of Starship uh, once you start using the program. The bill of lading, for those of you might do, be doing LTL, can be generated. Hazardous paperwork also could be generated out of Starship today as well. Um, we also talk to a lot of users who do a lot of drop shipping, um, and not so much drop shipping from your vendors, but drop shipping from your own building on behalf of someone else. Um, and we do have abilities there of switching profiles um, to make the ship from um, location look like it's someone else other than yourself. So if you do have any of those needs, we can sim um, definitely simplify that for you as well. Um, consolidation of orders is another main feature of this uh, platform with Starship. Being able to select multiple orders um, to ship them together as one master shipment, uh, and then being able to write back to multiple orders at the same time, that can also be done with the Starship platform. The big one, live rate shopping, um, which right now many of you may go to say UPS or FedEx or maybe individual LTL portals um, to get your rates through or maybe even get post office rates through um, another platform. Everything can be consolidated into Starship today um, and provide you in one screen, which you'll see here momentarily, all of your live rates that you've negotiated and you allow to choose which mode, which carrier you want to use uh, for that particular shipment. And then metrics, really being able to have a full dashboard, full suite of reports to be able to run at your leisure, um, to be able to have better negotiation discussions, be able to see your um, data in real time versus having to go to multiple platforms to put that all together, maybe through an Excel program of some kind. So having it all right in front of you is very, very helpful. Um, really quick on the QuickBooks integration, right? What are we gonna do, right? We're gonna update QuickBooks with tracking, shipped on dates, shipped via codes, you know, how many packages and a lot more. We have um, access to a lot more information than Shipgear has that we can put into QuickBooks um, if you like us to. We typically, these are the, usually the main four things we'll write back. 
But if you ask us for additional information, as long as Starship can provide it to us, we can have that right back into your QuickBooks platform. Um, Real-time integration, so there's no delay here. Just like ship gears in real time, the minute we process something, it's coming back into QuickBooks. Um, updating your freight costs, either with published rates, um, negotiated rates, or even something called applied rates, which I'll talk more about as I get into the demo, but essentially just think of those as your marked up rates, right? So a lot of you may be doing that manually. Starship can help you do that with various freight rules um, that are built in. And then also marking your order as process. So we have a special field, a custom field we'll create in your QuickBooks environment um, to allow us to write this word process so we can remove that from your lookup window so we don't duplicate an order by accident uh, in the future. So very helpful kind of workaround uh, that we've created. Um, so that way you can have another check and balance inside your QuickBooks application. Why are we all look at the cloud, right? So when we talk about cloud, everything is around this, um, you know, discussion these days with a lot of different platforms, but really Starship is always on the latest version. We don't have to call in an IT uh, resource, an outside firm, pay them all this sorts of money. Um, Starship will update on its own, um, typically late in the evening, early morning hours. Um, it will run um, on its own. When you log in the next morning, nothing's gonna seem like it's happened, right? You're gonna log in as normal and everything will be up and running for you. Um, the cloud will give you access to unlimited users as well as all of our carriers we support in Starship today. Um, so if you're choosing a parcel only option, you'll have access to all of our parcel carriers. If you choose our LTL option, you'll have access to all of the carriers, um, including all the parcel ones as well. Um, we manage seasonality uh, with different tiered pricing. So some of you might be at your off peak now, but come into the you know holiday season, might go to the peak. We can change those tiers accordingly to make sure you have enough volume to ship within that uh, time frame. And then as well as restricting access to certain users. So you may not give your shippers access to say your subscription portal where you can change your plan. Um, you may give your front office staff only access to rate shopping or running a report. So you as administrators can essentially run the application how you would typically run your QuickBooks environment um, and providing that those restrictions and certain accessibility points to those users. This is just a quick access or a slide on our carriers we support today. Um, so there's about 25 carriers here between parcel and LTL, a couple three PLs we also support um, that we can assist you with. But again, if you don't see any of your carriers on here for any reason, don't be alarmed. We can still assist you and Jason or Will can talk to you about those options to you as well and what that may look like um, in case if we don't support them in, uh, from an API perspective. And this is a quick glance at what a DAR dashboard looks like in Starship. So here you can see we have things like distribution maps, charts, uh, we have reports, um, very um, you know, in-depth detail here to provide to you so you can get an idea of where you're shipping your products, how much you might be spending week to week, um, if there's any trends, negative or positive, um, that can you know, you know, maybe set off some discussions internally, right? But this is very helpful when you look at negotiations with the carriers. Um, also expansion. Um, this is helpful to make sure you get to your customer as quickly as possible. Um, so there's very there's a lot of benefits to having this all in your fingertips. Uh, because again, calling your UPS rep or FedEx rep for this type of information is essentially their lowest priority. Um, so you can get delayed uh, pretty um, a long time for instance, uh, waiting for that information to come to you. And then lastly, before I jump into a quick demo here, I wanna talk really about the risk of remaining with ship gear, right? So I know we have a lot, of, we've talked to a lot of customers since we announced it back in February, 2022. Um, and a lot of users have already moved. Um, onto Starship, most are starting to come on board now. But again, we do have those um, users who are still waiting and holding on to the end. However, just want to make everyone aware there are no more bug fixes or enhancements being put into the product with ship gear, right? So right now it is on its essentially last leg. Um, so what is out there is what's out there. Um, so in case if we do have any issues, there is no one to go and fix those issues. So we're kind of really risking kind of remaining on that type of product. Um, we still have 900 customers um, using the platform today um, who still need to migrate uh, by December. So relative to the next seven months, um, we need to get those customers onto Starship. So the backlog is already starting to build. Um, we're already about six weeks out um, currently, um, you know, for scheduling purposes. 
Uh, and we're expecting that to just keep climbing um, northward as we get into July and August and beyond. Um, so again, we wanna make sure we set the urgency level to letting you all know that, hey, if we wait any longer, there could be a risk where we go beyond 2023 with something that's not supported any longer. We wanna make sure everyone is on Starship as soon as possible um, so we don't have those issues. Um, also paying higher fees for limited integration, no additional enhancements. And then also most importantly, promotional pricing may not be available the second half of the year. So with the discounts we're offering today, um, those may not be around come July, August. So you may want to, may not, might as well take advantage of those while they last. Um, so you can uh, definitely save a little bit of money there as well. All right, so before I jump into that, I will, uh, I'm gonna jump into a quick little demonstration for everyone so they can see this. So, <clears throat> um, so our QuickBooks um, integration. Um, so we support sales order, sales invoice. Um, those are the two documents primarily we support with QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, so when we look at a sales order, what do we pull in? We pull in your ship to information. We look at your ship via, this coming in via UPS. And then we also look at all the line items on the order will also come into Starship as well. Uh, and I'll talk about why we pull in line items and the importance of those, especially if you're shipping LTL, international, or even EDI uh, for those types of shippers as well, why we need those line items to come in. But as we go into Starship and we pull in Starship here, when you log in, first thing you'll have a dedicated URL to your company. So you'll log in like normal, uh, user ID, password, you come to your main screen, just like ship gear today, you all have this little, um, key import fields here where you can type in or scan in an order number, you have the same functionality in Starship with this little uh, window here. You get it enter, your um, order will populate automatically into Starship. One thing to point out, we get this question asked a lot. We do not use WorldShip or Ship Manager with Starship. Those applications will go away. Starship is your central point of entry. Um, this is gonna generate all your documents, um, all the tracking numbers, Everything is sent back into QuickBooks through Starship. We do not use WorldShip or Ship Manager um, for the integration here. Um, so when you pull in your order, you can use the truck icon um, off to the right, as right, click the truck icon once, and all the information would just populate for you in one page. So we work essentially top to bottom, and I'm not gonna go through all of these little sections, but we're more than happy to take you through them in a more of a private demo. Uh, but just to highlight a couple things here, recipient coming in from the ship, um, from the recipient information from QuickBooks. We do have address validation. That's what this green checkbox is representing that everything's checked out to be good. Um, we also do a residential versus commercial check for that. Um, the ship via um, also will come in um, that corresponds to ship via from, you, uh, from QuickBooks. We can default to prepaid. We also can set up your various third-party IDs in here. So if you do third-party shipping, we can set up all your account numbers in our database and then map those in, that information in from QuickBooks as well. So we can trigger that to the appropriate account uh, for you. Um, we have things like Quantum View built into Starship as well for delivery um, exception emails to be sent out. We have insurance, CODs, um, all of these options. And this menu changes based on the carrier you all select. Um, and we can set these based on conditions or you can easily come in here and check the box that you want to have applicable. Uh, on a manual format as well. Um, and then the other difference between ship gear and Starship is you're gonna see in the packing element, you're gonna see those line items, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, you can set up various packaging scenarios like I have here to define specific items in the box. I can have all my items come into one box. I can add easily a box up here um, to the shipment if I wanted to by clicking the icon, um, just like World Ship or Ship Manager you will have your own data uh, packaging database. So you can define those ahead of time with its corresponding dimensions and weights. Uh, and we do support dimensional weight as well. Um, so we can look at your DIM divisors to make sure that this is accurate. So the rating is accurate down below, okay? So that's important um, as well. And then uh, line items, um, just really mappings from QuickBooks, but real quick on here. Uh, we store all the key data, especially if you're doing LTL, like your groups or NMFCs or class. We would have an international tab up here if we were shipping internationally for your um, Canadian documentation, like USMCA forms, um, commercial invoice, your HTS codes is all saved at the individual SKU level. 
Um, so you can either import that into Starship. We can end have you enter it first time and first time only. So it saves it. So it just generates those documents as needed um, each time you ship the specific, the specific SKU. Um, and then down here, you have essentially your um, charges coming in from UPS. We'll show your contracted rates. We can show your published rates. I'm just hiding those at the moment. Um, and then the applied rates are just marked up rates, right? So I essentially have a 10% markup here. Um, I'm going to send that back to QuickBooks because that's what I'm invoicing my customer. Um, but as long as the invoice comes in under $71, I'm covered. I'm happy. I move on. I don't have to worry about it. But the rules can always be modified as needed. They're not set in stone. Uh, but again, you, you can have different rules for different customers if you like as well. And then last but not least is the rate shop, right? So you can always set up another rule for the rate shop to happen automatically. Um, something like cheapest ground option, so we can find what that is. Or you can easily click this little shop all button. And all this simply does is goes out and finds all your negotiated rates on your license, pulls those in through the API, shows you basically from lowest to highest. You can sort on any one of these columns, by the way. So it's showing you that my UPS ground rate is second in line. Uh, but priority mail, a post office, is coming up the cheapest. It's also going to return the transit time and then the cost. So in this example, I'm showing you that post office is going to be essentially $21 roughly cheaper to ship with. So if I wanted to switch it, all I would have to do is click the box next to the post office, and it would switch it to my uh, postage provider's account, either Easy Post or Pitney Bowes. And then that way, basically, um, you know, print your priority mail labels, and then you go on to your next order. Okay. But in this example, I want to just point out, you will see your LTL rates if they ap apply. So in some examples, you might be on the cusp, but you can also switch it to a different mode completely away from parcel if you wanted to as well. And then last but not least is this just ship and process. Um, so now I'm gonna ship, I'm gonna print my two labels. I can print my packing list from Starship if I wanted to. So here's an example of a, um, a write back that has occurred, right, <coughs> with UPS. So we, again, we can put in various pieces of information in QuickBooks, right? So you can have your shipped on date, right? You can have all your tracking numbers written back in here. The line items, meaning what items are shipped in what box uh, for the specific shipment. And then those applied rates are written back over here. And then again, that ship status field, right? We can also write the word processed into. So we remove it from that um, lookup window altogether. So that's kind of the write back, which you can expect. Um, and then taking you back into Starship for a quick moment, um, we basically have our dashboard, right? So our dashboard can provide you, again, various pieces of information I already mentioned, but I do want to just highlight here all the various reports that you have access to, things like address correction. You'll have things like the applied versus contract rate, so you can see the discrepancies there. Um, freight detail report. We had late deliveries, which is a popular one, a parcel detail, international detail. So a lot of reports at your fingertips to run um, for various points in time. Um, so again, you don't need to bother the carrier reps for that specific information. You can have access to it at any point uh, that you need it. And then lastly here, before I open it up to some questions, um, just want to kind of review really quick the email notifications. Um, so you definitely have access to this as well. So I'll kind of just show you a quick example of what you can run and create. Again, you have access to a full template designer in here. So you can set these up however you like for individual customers, for everybody, one and the same. Um, but again, you could put logos, PO numbers, sales order number, the carrier it's with, right, when to expect a delivery by, um, all the tracking numbers associated, or maybe just a master tracking number. These are all hyperlinked, so they can click on them, go out to the UPS website and track their own orders if they prefer. And then if you're doing anything with e-commerce, you can also uh, provide them, say, a coupon code to come back for a future order, maybe even a standard phone order, product announcement, whatever you like to do, there's no restrictions in this email but it's a bit more colorful than a standard quantum view um, type of email. But with that being said, um, I am gonna sort of stop there at this point. We're right up at the 20 minute mark. And uh, again, thanks for joining us this afternoon. So we will talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.